Have you ever wondered what the best setup for references are? Did you know that there are multiple ways to do so? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the various techniques for setting up references inside a ZBrush. Additionally, I'll share the specific method that I use inside of the industry. Hi guys, it's Virtus here. I'm a 3D character artist, art director, and games art university lecturer. My expertise lies in forging industry ready artists. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding on the best methods for referencing and how to use that inside your projects. So the first method I'm going to show you is something called draw planes, and it's very similar to those who have used traditional 3D softwares. If you open up the top left in draw, I'm going to click this little button just to dock it to the side. Now in the draw section, you're going to have a lot of options which are useful for changing camera perspectives. What we're interested in is towards the bottom where it says front and back and left and right. So to access this functionality first, you have to press this little button here. This will give us a four plane that we can construct the images around. Just note that this isn't going to be related to your games for floor plane so sometimes that confuses people so the first reference we're going to load in a front image and under map one you can click this and it's going to give you your texture selections that are in your project we just want to come down to import and here i'm going to select a front image that i pre-prepared and now you see it's brought in an image behind our reference and the good thing is we can set up multiple angles so basically when we move this from the front to the side and the back we'll always have a reference to see that the character that we're trying to copy so when rotating from the back if you don't want to see the front you're just going to replace the back image with either something that's blank or if you're lucky enough to have that back shot um, a back concept i've also loaded in the left and right images uh, the good thing about this is if it comes in backwards obviously this isn't the orientation you can just double check by the direction of this head in the top right now if that is the case you can use these adjusters so for example inverse or flip what flip's going to do is just going to rotate it around so you can work from both sides now you don't have to do it on the other side because when you look at it from this angle uh, thankfully you can see through it so from both sides we can see both the left and right now a really awesome feature about this way of setting up planes is that whenever you're hovering on top of your model you get these blue and red lines and they basically indicate whereabouts on the reference you're so say for example you're really trying to be precise with where you're placing the head it can be super useful to line up things like the eyes so if I just get roughly a head shape right now I can show you that in demonstration so while I'm hovering on here I'm actually looking at the blue marker on the left side and aligning that to her eye and then once I've got that orientation I can look on the right side for the red and then basically try and match the two now if I do a very small incision it's gonna that's precisely where her eye is located in 3d space so this can be useful if you want to place things like eyeballs or maybe just get the height of the character now you could be really creative with this so for example if we come to append I'm just going to append uh, a plane 3d plane 3d I'm going to come to the gizmo and then just rotate it 90 degrees and hold shift now basically when I go on the orientation you can see that it's actually locating itself on the references so let's say for example I'm about to work on the torso it might be an idea to move this plane up to the top of the neck you can see the alignment there on the blue and the red side and its effect that it has on the 2d concept duplicate that down again and then maybe we could aim for something like the waistline so once that's done you've got basically the alignment of the 2d concept but you also have a 3d reference that you can work with um, so that's a really cool strategy for making sure that your proportions are all correct and the good thing about looking at it from the front and the side is that you can't see those original planes so we go over a similar process in the base mesh creation video use a slightly different reference technique that i'll show in a minute um, but it's just up to you if you Prefer, which one you sort of like prefer but really useful when it comes to getting correct uh, proportions and masses now with these planes you can make a couple of adjustments move a couple around these so you don't have to test yourself so there's the grid size that's basically going to affect all the planes globally so if you set that up or maybe you've got a different size character in a game maybe it's a four foot or a six foot or there are just different scale requirements that can be useful there's also tiling uh, i wouldn't find too much use of that i'd probably prefer to set up any form of gridding in photoshop myself and then bring that in you can rescale each one of them independently so say for example you didn't do it prior although i suggest doing it prior and i'll show you how to do that just now there's also an offset so say for example you're creating two characters at the same time maybe it has a slight offset and that would be useful in general uh, generic image based editing you also have a number of visual adaptations so for example the front dots color of the grid so for example if you've got a different colored background so i let you play around with these just to discover which ones you prefer so hopefully if you're in the industry chances are the concept artist is going to give you very nicely aligned concepts but we can appreciate that sometimes they won't be aligned or maybe you're drawing your own ones so if i do get a character sheet from a concept artist i'll bring it into photoshop i'll then press c to come into crop mode and then i'll just adjust these to the preferred 
side. So here, for example, if I just want the front shot, drag the crop regions around and then press enter. Once that's done, I usually go to file and then export, and then I'll come to quick export as PNG. Find a nice directory for that. Once that's exported, I'll then come back to the original reference sheet and I'll just click and drag. And this is going to bring the box the same crop size. And if you hold shift, it's going to lock on. And here, for example, we can get a side shot. You can put these in slightly if you don't want the excess weight around the side. Press enter and then re-export it. And you see in the full process, you'll do that for the back, the front and the right and the left. So just to show how that is in practice. So here, for example, we can start to make a bit of a face shape. You'll see that it's slightly off centered, so I can change the setting. With that, I'm just going to nudge this horizontal off set and make sure that it's perfectly lined down the center of my sphere. A useful thing that I usually do is just rotate to the back and then we can actually see inadvertently the face uh, pasted on top. Can then come to the side and make these adjustments. If you don't like the fact that you can't see the reference while you're doing it, what I suggest is come to the left and right and then just insert the same image to the other side. So one thing I don't like about this process is it doesn't give you much varied functionality. So say, for example, I might just want to work on this solo without an annoying background, or maybe I want to work on it in front, or maybe I just want a completely different reference. And to do that, I'll have to come in and change them quite a lot. I also have to save out different file variants to bring into here. So it's not usually my preference to do it. Maybe if I was making something like a sword, this could be useful because I know that those references aren't going to move so much. Uh, but for a character, I usually prefer to use a couple of different methods that we're going to go through. Another different way you can bring in a reference is actually connect it to to a physical object. So say, for example, we would come to append and then just append plane 3D. Now with this 3D plane, it's totally possible to put a texture on here and then you can manipulate that and basically align it how you want to. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to come down to UV mapping and texture map. And then in texture map, you're going to follow a similar process and just come and import your texture. You'll see that she is both upside down and squished a little bit. And that's because of the UVs of this specific object. Now, without going too deep into UVs, basically the original image that we had is being compressed into this squared object. So there are ways of fixing that, but to be honest, I prefer not to do it that way. Um, if I was going to bring in a reference, I would just make sure I came into Photoshop. And what you can do is if you come up to the crop and then just turn this to a one to one ratio square, and then with that one to one ratio square, you can just adjust this that you want that plane to show. So say, for example, we just want to work on the top torso. We're doing a specific thing. Maybe we're doing kind of like her pendant or her collar. Same process for exporting. Going to click on the texture map again and re-import this square version. Now, so now what's happened is we don't have that distortion, but obviously it's up there, upside down. So to rectify that, you can flip the texture around. Uh, but to be honest, what I'm going to do is just rotate this physical object. So if you imagine what you could in theory have is those are these little squares that you can bring in at a uh, moment's notice and just sort of put it behind. The nice thing about this is um, it works well with the transparent mode. So when we don't have this object here, transparent mode doesn't work very well. But here we know for sure that it's solid object. Just be careful not to accidentally rescale these because obviously if you scale it up, it's going to throw all your proportions off and you can do really interesting things with this still. So because it's a physical object and it has geometry, we can actually hold control and mask off particular areas. And then if we come to split and then split mask, points. So that's going to split this reference into multiple pieces. So it might be an idea to get a, a large character reference in and then just split up into loads of different components that you can use about. So that can be a very useful process. Remember at any time, if you don't want to see this reference, you can just press the floor button again. And that's going to make everything vanish. Okay, now we're going to go into the next phase. Uh, this is my personal favorite and it's also the one that I teach. This is where we can bring in a reference, lock it to a camera and then just basically have all the functionality of opacity and make any edits if we want to. So under the texture tab, we're just going to dock this to the side. In texture, we're going to come to import. We're going to select both the front and the side. With the front selected, I'm just going to click this button, which is a plus and a minus. It's going to add it to something called Spotlight. Now with Spotlight activated, we can actually move this reference around and experiment with this wheel, but these options are all going to do different things, whether it's actually scaling the reference itself, kind of like tiling them together or changing the opacity. Uh, scale, move and opacity is going to be the main ones that you're using. So whenever you want to add a reference to the spotlight, just make sure it's selected in the texture. I'm going to click the same button, which is the plus and minus. So you can arrange these how you like. Uh, initially, we're going to be starting to make the base body. So I tend to put it to the right and the left. The features of spotlight is that when you press Z, you're going to come back to your normal sculpting functionality. And when we're sculpting on the mesh, you might find that the brush isn't applying. So this is a very important step to pay attention to. You basically want to come into brushes. Then under brushes, you're going to come to something called samples. Then under samples, we have spotlight projection. So spotlight projection is basically used for getting um, texturing during the process. It's sort of like we paste stuff onto models. 
So as we're using as this a reference guide, we don't want that option. Um, so what I've done is I usually dock it to the side of my UI. And uh, if you're interested in my UI, I'm probably going to share this uh, to my email subscribers. So just make sure that you go on the free Umuti website. That's basically where I release all my free content, things like base meshes and UIs. But because I bring in references so much, I just dock that so I can just turn this on and off. You see that you've now got a sculpting ability. If you want to the references themselves, you can hold shift. So you've got shift and C to hide it and show it. And then you've got Z on its own to basically manipulate each one of these or come back to the sculpting version. So to set this up with a reference view, we're going to lock this to a camera. So under documents, we're going to open this and dock it to the side. Now in our documents, we've got something called Z app link properties, and it's similar to the last reference sheet. We have front, back, top, right, and left. So I'm going to make a very quick head just so we can get some directional orientation. Fancy there, you get the picture. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically position this in front or behind the reference. Uh, it's going to be important that you turn off perspective. So if you press P on your keyboard, that's going to turn perspective on and off. With perspective on, it's actually distorting our model based on where it's positioned on our screen. So that's not going to be useful when we're setting up references. So just make sure that's off and it's not highlighted. Now, what might make this a little bit easier is just to increase the size of the references. Now, if I was working on the head, I would actually use a full headshot but for this, we're just focusing on the body and then we come back to the head later and use a different set of references. So you can see how the workflow, remember you can turn the opacity down. So just click here and at about two o'clock, you've got the opacities. Now there are actually better ways of preparing our references. So I really suggest after this video that you come to the My References strategy. And I basically show you all the ways that we can use references to the maximum capability. Um, and in that, I show you how to basically draw lines to make this entire process really easy. So if you combine those two videos, um, um, you're going to be really set when it comes to being a character artist. So once you've positioned the head, what it can come down to is Z app blank properties and then just press front once. Now, what that's done is it's stored that location in front of our reference. So anytime that we come back and press this front button, it's going to snap back to that reference. So say, for example, you come in here and you make some adjustments, maybe you're working on the eye, you can come back, press front and then just see what effect and see if you've come off your reference, and then you can just make those adjustments back. Now, a really cool thing is we can actually set up multiple cameras. So what we can do is take this from the side and now we can just press the left button. So now we've got two really good ways of making sure we're keeping to the reference. So we've got a front shot and we've also got a left shot. So usually what I do is I just build up on the character in the front or in between the two references, sort of like make these adjustments. And then I'll just come back to here and check how I'm getting on. Or if I'm in sculpting mode, I can just press shift and Z and then that means I can focus on sculpting. And then when it comes to checking the references, shift Z, bring it back again, and then check everything. Now, if you really want to optimize this workflow, and it's what I go through over in the base mesh creation module, you can actually hotkey this front button and the left button. So usually what I like to do is I like to assign those to the key. So it's near my left hand. If I hold Control and Alt. Now what you can see up here in the top left, it will come up again. But what it says is please reassign this hotkey. The next one you press will be assigned. So just pay attention to the top left here. Control, Alt, click the front, press any key combination it says. So here I'm going to press three for my front view. I'm going to over assign it to something else I have. Press OK. I'm going to do the same for the left side. So Control, Alt. And this time I'm going to assign the left key. So now what I've got is with my finger, I'm pressing three and four here. It's basically snapping in between front and back. So you can be really quick with adding adjustments or sculpting on the face, for example. You know, I can be sculpting away, sort of like creating eyes and cheeks where I think they'll be. Now, while sculpting, what's probably happened is that the shape of the head has changed. So I'll have to make those adjustments. I'll quickly press three, just make sure I'm right on track. Come back to sculpting it, you know, maybe create a nose, see if I can get accurate with that. Press four. I'm now back into this mode. I can then move that landmark. So maybe just to change the shape of that nose or bring out the muzzle and things like that. Then come back into normal sculpting mode and then just continue need to make uh, back and forth. So it's really fast method. And obviously the face is really small on the screen, so I wouldn't focus on that. Next, we would just duplicate this and then start to build our block out. So if you're interested in that block out, I really suggest watching that video it just shows you how to block out basically any form of character that you make. So we can duplicate the head and then just start to make sort of like a torso shape. Press four, that's going to snap back to the side. And then we can make our silhouette adjustments with the move tool and then just make our adjustments from the front. So 
An issue I always found with this was that every time I close ZBrush, uh, I would actually lose my spotlight. Now, it never really was a problem because I'd basically leave ZBrush all open all the time and I would just hibernate my computer. I actually asked on the, it's a good time to talk about our Discord channel. The 3D Mutiny Discord channel will give feedback and post works in progress and things like that in trying to work out if anyone knew a way for this not to close and actually I could keep my settings. There was actually up in here under file, you can come into spotlight and you can actually save these spotlight settings and then load them in because when you're going to close this ZBrush file, uh, you're going to lose all your references here and that's obviously going to be really annoying. So just make sure you come up to file and then save that spotlight. So thanks for pointing that out. Still learning. <laughs> okay, so where I use this process is obviously for the blocking out phase if I'm trying to position any sorts of gear. Also any for, for any beauty shots, maybe there's a 2D reference that I'm trying to copy. I can just bring that into the front screen and then just match it really well. Now there is a final way of bringing in a texture. I'm almost going to reluctantly show you because I think it's so crap, but stick around because I've got another really good way of showing references. But if you want to bring in a texture just into the background of ZBrush, you can actually use this texture check section and then come down to something called image plane. And if you load an image, it's just going to paste it into the background. Um, I haven't really found a use for it. Only really an, an annoyance when I'm teaching at university, people often come in here and then just load an image and then they have a lot of difficulty with managing that. Um, and also, also a common one is that usually people have a reference in the background, say for example, like this, they would then come to ZBrush and then use this see through function. Um, so that can be useful if, if you sort of like find a reference on the internet really quickly and you just want to look at it while you're sculpting just to see how you're getting along. One thing that's going to be super annoying if you use this as a reference and sort of like try and overlay it, there's no way of coming or snapping back to like with the previous one we were doing. So you'll often see um, it's actually quite confusing to see what you're working on. And unlike the previous section, we can't just hide the Z app link. We always have to keep on scrolling this up and down. So this is a far, far better way of doing it. Auto locking with hotkeys, hiding and showing the references with hotkeys uh, and also adjusting the images with hotkeys. So, so now I'm going to move on to the final really good way of doing references. And this is the second version. I use it in combination with the one we went just through with the hotkeys. I ask if you enjoyed the video so far or you found it interesting. Thing. just leave a like so you can always come back to it in your history say for example you want to share it with someone it's always going to be in your like history also subscribe because i'm going to be releasing loads of content on how to create 3d characters for those who don't know me i'm a character artist art director and i also teach at university on the subject of games design and art as i mentioned loads of benefits coming from the 3d mutiny discord a good way to get ahead is just post your work in progress forums get feedback from other people uh, i'm also on there giving feedback in video format. I often release that every month. Also a good couple of resources and where people are introducing themselves. So the final reference and combination method I use is something called PureRef, which is a secondary software. I go over it in secondary software that I use in the industry. Um, and that video is coming out next week. It's already scheduled or if you're watching this later, it's already on my channel. So just have a look at that. Pure is really cool because you can basically just drag in any number of references and arrange them easily with a, an intuitive method. Also has an unlimited pixel size. Really useful if you have an individual screen and you want this to be always showing on top so you can always see it. You can actually right click here and under mode, you have a couple of options. So you have always on top. So that means that whenever you're working inside of ZBrush, you'll always be able to see your references. And if you just want to move around, you can hold right click to move the window itself or you can hold middle mouse click to just navigate around this reference. So I suggest setting up basically your two camera views that you can lock in between, maybe off to the side, then you'd have your pure ref shots and you'd use this to just navigate your character and get a better sense of what it looks like. Maybe for example, we're working a bit more on the hair or the eyes, you can just zoom into here. You can also press control W, the pure ref, so you don't accidentally move it. Um, the workflow that I use is I actually have this off to the side onto one of my second screens, uh, which makes, which gives me a little bit more real estate for working in the camera perspectives. So there is, that's literally every method I use in the industry to create a character. It's the same process that I've been using for a good good couple of years, only refined. Again, make sure you look at any of those videos that I was referencing. I'm going to link them in the bottom so you can add those to your queue and do all the cool stuff that helps this channel. So things like uh, liking, subscribing and joining the Discord community. That's truly what I'm most interested in is seeing new works of art, new talent and just discussions around the games industry. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.